I got knocked over. <laughs> Now this is what I call amazing. We've got five or six, three meter, nine, ten foot long bull sharks right behind us. They've actually hit Eric and I in our legs and moved us backwards, our entire body weight. What do you reckon about that? I don't know. <laughs> That's great. And look, awesome. we've got all our fingers and toes. That's amazing. Ha, there he is again. Look at that. There's no question these sharks rarely make mistakes. But we're not finished yet. Now it's time to go swimming with them. Eric wants to illustrate how rising heart rates and running away can dramatically change the shark's attitude to us. This should explain why sharks often chase snorkelers and people who panic. Unfortunately, many of the shark attacks that happen, we fail to see the shark. And without knowing it, we've done something to incite the attack. And of course, there are some sharks that are just plain hungry enough to attack us for a meal. But Eric believes that true attacks like this are a lot rarer than we think. And his research is proving it. This experiment is about as dangerous as I'm prepared to attempt. As we hold our breath, our pulse rates go up. You can see the circling sharks coming in slightly closer, but not a lot. Just heart rate rising doesn't seem to really bring them in. We're out of air, and our oxygen-deprived muscles are now moving in a less controlled motion. And it's this action that Eric says is one of the reasons snorkelers and spearfishermen get attacked by sharks more often when returning to the surface. Now let's try that again. This time there are eight sharks all around us and our pulse rates are still up from the last dive. This, combined with a swimming backwards and forwards, seems to have them even more interested. They're all over us, but if we remain cool, they don't attack. I can't believe it. I'm still alive and I've got Eric's understanding of these sharks to thank for it. We've learned that they need another stimulus to bite us. We can add this stimulus as easily as changing our behaviour. Look what happens when we swim off this time. They're right behind us. If we panicked now and thrashed and splashed our way back to the beach, anything could happen. <laughs> oh my god. Did you see that? Oh, I was solid. <laughs> this thing was on my head, you know. As so I'm coming here close to John, and damn it, don't the get a good head scratch. Amazing. Well, kiddies, don't do that at home, okay? <laughs> but it sure did illustrate what Eric was saying. And in light of Eric's work, we really have to rethink our attitude to sharks. To come this close to wild bull sharks safely clearly shows that these sharks are not mindless eating machines. But even after all we've learned from Eric, there are a few more basic rules that will help you relax and enjoy your day at the beach. The statistics definitely don't tell the whole story. If Eric is correct, then most shark attacks that happen here on the Florida coast are not shark attacks at all, but defensive bites by sharks that have been pushed into defending themselves. We also need to keep the number of bites that happen here in perspective. It's important to remember that of the millions of people who use the ocean every year, only a handful of attacks actually happen, and many of them can be avoided if you follow a few common sense rules. Don't swim alone. Sharks are more likely to bite individuals than someone in a group. Be careful between sandbars and steep drop-offs. Those are favourite shark hangouts. And don't enter the water when you're bleeding. But there's something else to keep in mind, and that's just how low the risk of shark attack really is. Back in 1996, only 19 Americans were injured by shark attack. In that same time, 43,687 Americans were injured by what lies beyond this door, the toilet. Now that's scary stuff.